Brian Little. <laughs> What's going on everyone and welcome to Cooking with Drunken Buddha. Nothing says it's the fall season or the holidays like a homemade apple pie. Today we're making an apple pie with a salted caramel sauce. We're going to break this down into three parts, the crust, the caramel sauce, and the filling. Let's get started. In a large mixing bowl, you're going to add two and one half cups or 315 grams of all-purpose flour, one and one quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, three quarters of a cup or 148 grams of chilled vegetable shortening, and six tablespoons or 90 grams of chilled and cubed unsalted butter. You're going to also want to set to the side a half a cup of ice water, which we'll need later. For now, you're going to pinch the butter and the shortening between your fingertips, working quickly, but also keeping a light touch because you don't want to melt the butter. You're going to do this until the flour has a crumb like texture or looks similar to wet sand. Once you've thoroughly combined all the butter and shortening into the flour, you're going to slowly mix in the ice cold water, one to two tablespoons at a time, mixing with a wooden spoon or a fork until a shaggy dough is formed. Once that dough is formed, you're going to turn that dough out onto your work surface, sprinkle it with some flour, and quickly form it into a ball and splitting that ball into two equal halves. Wrap your disc of dough in plastic wrap and chill these bad boys in the fridge for two hours or overnight if you want. Now, while our dough is chilling, let's get started on our caramel sauce. In a medium saucepan or medium heat, you're gonna add one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar and you stir this continuously with a wooden spoon or a silicone spatula until the sugar is melted and caramelized. Once the sugar has completely dissolved, carefully add in six tablespoons or 90 grams of salted butter, cubed and at room temperature. Once the butter is incorporated, carefully and slowly drizzle in half a cup or 120 milliliters of heavy cream. Be very careful here. The sauce will bubble because of the temperature difference. Now, once that is thoroughly mixed together, you're going to add in one teaspoon of kosher salt and you're going to continue to stir until thoroughly combined. Once you have everything all mixed together, you're going to remove the pot from the heat. You're going to pour your caramel sauce into a heat proof dish and you're going to set aside and let it cool. We'll come back to that later. It's time to peel and slice the main attractions of our pie. Here I have six large apples. I'm using three Honeycrisp and three Pink Ladies. Personally, you can use whatever apples you want to use. It just depends on your preference. Uh, different apples will give you different flavor profiles. Um, whatever apples you do use, just make sure you check them for soft spot and blemishes at the market because you don't want a soft apple. So I'm going to peel, core, and slice all six of these. And it's very important to make sure that you have an even slice. So if you're not too competent in your knife skills or too confident, you're more than welcome to use a mandolin. Just make sure that you watch your fingers and use your hand guard when you use it. Once you got all your apples sliced and in a large mixing bowl, to that you're going to add half a cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar, one quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, one and one half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one quarter of ground or freshly grated nutmeg, I prefer the fresh stuff, two teaspoons or the zest of one medium lemon, three tablespoons or 50 milliliters of fresh lemon juice, I just use the juice of the lemon that we just zested, and don't be like for me and forget to add one quarter cup or 31 grams of all purpose flour. Combine all the ingredients until the apples are evenly coated. You're going to sit the bowl to the side and you're going to prep your space to roll out the dough. Place your ball of pastry dough onto a flawed work surface making sure to sprinkle flour on top of your dough as you roll it out. Ideally, you want to make sure there's at least three to four inches of dough that extends past your pie dish. If not, you can patch up the crust with your pie dough scraps before you place the ladder strips on. Now, once your dough is rolled out, you can either gently pick it up and carefully place it on your dish or you can use your rolling pin to help you. Once you have your pie dough situated onto your dish, 
Gently and carefully lay the dough into the dish and let it fall into place. Um, it's okay if you have a lot of excess dough hanging over. We'll get to that later. Now with your dough situated in the pie dish, go ahead and roll out your other ball of dough the same way as you did the crust. But this time, instead of placing it in the dish, you're gonna cut out about 10 even strips that are about half an inch wide and long enough to go across the pie. This will be your lattice top. You're gonna fill your crust with your apple filling. And this is the point where if you have a patchy crust, you're gonna use any scraps that you may have to fill in those empty spaces. And now we're gonna create our lattice pattern on our pie. Start by laying down five strips of dough on the pie and you're just gonna weave in the remaining five in an overlapping pattern. Once done, you're gonna trim off the excess edge of your pie. And here you can start crimping your pie. You can do a decorative edge, whatever you want. I was lazy and I didn't do it. It's optional, right? Once you've got that done, it's time for the egg wash. You're gonna beat one egg and one tablespoon of water and you're gonna brush it across your dough. This is gonna help you have a nice golden brown color to your dough. It's gonna make it look really nice and pretty. Optionally, if you have any finishing sugar, you can sprinkle it on your dough after the egg wash. I'm using vanilla sugar. You can use regular sugar or you can skip this step. You're gonna place your pie in a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you're gonna lower the temperature down to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius for 40 to 50 minutes. If you find that your crust is browning too quickly, you can always wrap it in foil to prevent burning. After an hour in the oven, you're gonna remove your pie and you're let it cool for four hours. Trust me, be patient, it's worth it. After you patiently waited for at least four hours, it's time to dig in and enjoy your apple pie. I personally like my apple pie drizzled in salted caramel sauce, served with homemade ice cream with more caramel sauce drizzled on top. You can eat your pie however you want. That's how I like mine. There is no pie shame here. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to follow the channel, drop me a like, and drop a comment below. Now, if you will excuse me, I am going to go enjoy another slice of pie. Thank you for watching.